answering that anxiety producing, why should we hire you question throws a lot of accounting and finance and accounts payable professionals into a tizzy. Most would love to skip this question, but since you probably want the job, skipping the question is not an option. Actually, it provides you with a golden opportunity if you can step up to the plate and knock it out of the ballpark with a great answer. But how you ask, what can you say to seal the deal and make them see that you really are the ideal candidate to join their team. We're about to show you. Make sure you stick around until the end when we share the one big mistake that sometimes even the most confident job searches make and one we want you to avoid. First, I'd like to address what you absolutely under no circumstances should say. While a job interview is a two-way street, there's no need to be a completely open book. They are learning about you and evaluating you to see if you're a good fit. But likewise, you should be learning about the company and trying to determine if it, it is a good fit for you. Is it a job you'd enjoy doing and will you fit in with the corporate culture or will it be like trying to mix oil with water? That being said, there's no reason to overshare. There are some things better left unsaid. So when they ask you why they should hire you, you really can't say what you're really thinking, which might be something along the lines of, because I really want or need this job, or because I need another job because my boss is driving me up the wall, or something that reflects your own self-interest. Remember, in answering this question, it's all about what you can do for them, not what they can do for you. Likewise, when, you re when responding, you want to avoid sounding obnoxious. So you need to proceed with a little caution because the right response can be a real game changer. With the right response, gaining you the coveted job offer and the wrong one, effectively turning it into a deal breaker. Although you'll never realize that's what happened. Let's start by walking the proverbial mile in the shoes of the interviewer. Remember that person has a boss too. Someone they are probably going to have to justify their hiring decision to. The easier time they have justifying their decision to make you an offer instead of someone else, the better your chances are of getting that offer. So you want to give them the ammunition they need when their boss asks them, why should we hire the person that they are recommending, which hopefully will be you. What they are looking for from you is one, an understanding of what they need, that you have that understanding, and two, an explanation of how you will fill that need. So sadly, this is not one of those questions when you can craft one great answer and use it at several different interviews. You may be able to rough something out ahead of time based on the job description, but you will probably want to refine it based on what the interviewer has said during the interview. Typically, this question will be asked towards the end of the interview. Your response should include both the requirements listed in the job description and information you have gleaned during the interview. By the time they ask this question, you should have ascertained, either because they told you or if they didn't, you asked, why there is an opening. If it is a brand new position, it is critical that you have uncovered what they are expecting the person in this position to accomplish. Make sure you address how you would meet that goal in your response. Either way, if you've done a good job during the interview, asking questions to ascertain what they're looking for, you can and should weave that into your response, taking care to address their pain points. That is why it is essential that you listen to every last word the interviewer says during the interview. It's critical that you understand what's important to them and then address that issue in your response. Sometimes it will have been in the job description, but sometimes it won't, and that's where you can really shine. For example, if there has been a lot of disagreements between purchasing an accounts payable and the new position is for a director of accounts payable, you might mention several steps you took in a past position to smooth out ruffled relationships with person. This is the type of thing that does not get mentioned in the job description, but the interviewer will probably talk about it. Now, I know sometimes people get nervous during the interview, and that makes it difficult to focus on what the other person is saying, but you absolutely must. What's more, by focusing on what they are saying, some of your nerves will dissipate, and that's a good thing. If you have any relevant experience to the job, make sure you incorporate that in your response. For if you can show Show you have already done something that they're looking for, you will have removed some of their anxiety 
about making the right hire. When responding, be as specific as possible. Try and avoid saying things like, I'm a hard worker or I'm very conscientious. Well, these are desirable attributes. Anyone could say it, could say that and you have no proof. It doesn't prove anything and more importantly or most importantly, it won't move the needle in your favor, especially if there are other equally talented job candidates, all of whom are going to say they are hard workers and conscientious. Your goal is to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself in a positive way from the pack. Bottom line, be as specific as possible with real life examples where possible. Let me give you a sample response. Let's say they are looking to hire a director of accounts payable who can research and implement a new automation solution in addition to running the department and of course managing relations with the purchasing department which are frayed at this point. If you've done it before you might say something like this. I've been running the accounts payable department for ABC company for the last six years and two years ago I led the implementation team when they installed an automation solution. As part of that process, we looked at 12 different solutions. While I'd want to do a quick review of any new products that may have come on the market in the last two years, I'd be ready to hit the ground running for your automation initiative. And you might also want to add, if this is the job again where accounts payable and purchasing have been having some clashes, when I was hired as the accounts payable manager at my last job, the one I've already been talking about, the relations with purchasing were also frayed. I invited the purchasing manager to lunch and told him I wanted to improve things. Together, we mapped out a plan. We agreed to meet every two weeks and discuss whatever had caused friction between the two groups in the prior two weeks. We had those meetings and we worked to identify root causes and then eliminate them. Sometimes it was accounts payable had to make a change, other times it was purchasing. But most of the time, it was just understanding what the other group was going through. We even initiated a plan where we had each of our team members spend one day in the other department going through with them what they did. Do you think something like that might work here? You've now addressed the two issues that seem to be important in this particular job situation. One from the job description and the other from listening to the interviewer explain what's needed. Warning, if it is a new position and in listening to them talk, you realize they have missed something or they look should be looking for some additional tasks, you wanna proceed carefully. I've seen very competent people unintentionally talk the interviewer out of hiring them due to some of the insights that they decided to share during the interview. Recommendation. Instead, as soon as you leave the interview, jot down everything you saw and heard. You might even dictate it into your smartphone before you have a chance to forget. Then, if you get the job, you have a list of action steps and recommendations you can make either when you start or at the end of your first week. This will make the hiring company recognize you for the superstar that you really are. Before we close off, I want to address the big mistake some make and give you an easy way to avoid it. I wish I could say that this is the only difficult question, i.e. why should we hire you, you're apt to be asked during an interview, but sadly that is not the case. At the end of the interview, they are likely to ask you if you have any questions. Now this may not seem like a difficult situation, but it can be and it's another golden opportunity. Many are really happy just to have gotten through the interview without any mishaps or disasters and they are ready to bolt. Plus, their mind goes blank, so they just shrug their shoulders and they say no. But that is another huge mistake and a golden opportunity missed. We think this is so important that we did a short talk on answering this question, along with few suggestions that you can use at the end to make the interviewer realize you are the must-hire candidate. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen, if you're watching on YouTube, and is in the description. Good luck.